Hello everybody, my name is Ben Yard and I'm the Somerset Whittler and today we're going to be talking about carving faces. Carving faces for small caricature carvings that I do and um, it's probably the thing that people ask me the most is how do you do your faces? What do you do when you practice them? How have you got to where you've got to? So mine's been a bit of a progression really. So today I'm not going to do any carving so if you're here for a carve along, um, this episode won't be for you. This is just a bit of a chat and just to run through how I've progressed in um, carving faces and hopefully some people can get an idea of where I was, where I'm going to and how I practiced to get to where I was. So when I started carving, um, most of mine were like more like suggestive style pieces. So I was carving things without putting too much details in it. So for example, I have here an Audrey Hepburn carving. So this was more about getting a piece. So this was a strange piece of wood. Uh, wah wah wood, I think it's called. Had a very distinctive sort of smell to it. So this is how I st kind of started my carving. Um, by doing the outlines, by trying to get things where I wanted them out, without going into too much details. And as you get closer there, you'll probably see that the detail is pretty damn basic on that. And what I tried to do from the start was just to kind of get everything in place, make it <clears throat> proportionately right, I think. It's probably the way I went. Um, and then I think when it stands, when it stands on my desk or on my shelf, it looks like a nice piece. But when you get really close, look at this is a bit of a funny piece of wood. It wouldn't take detail too brilliantly anyway. But this is quite early on in what I was doing. Um, yeah, not brilliant, but look nice from a distance. And I was learning to get my proportions right. I think that was a piece I learned quite a bit off of. I did similar things uh, in an Amy Winehouse. Again, I was trying to get my proportions right. Not brilliant. Legs could do with quite a bit of work. But again, as we got close, it was just trying to get the proportions right. I get into too much details. Same sort of time period. I did a bit of a music theme going on. But I did a Bob Marley. He was very much, very much the same. More suggestive, making sure proportions were correct. Then what I wanted to do is I wanted to get into the real sort of details of the face and try and get it as um, accurate as I can. Here's another one. This is a kind of like a falling down Michael Douglas. That was the idea of that one. Again, more suggestive as you get closer to that one. You can see it's quite round, not too many details in that. Quite basic. So then I started to try and study who I perceived to be the masters of um, carving the caricature of face. So I was looking at people like um, Dave Stetson. So Dave's obviously an absolute master at carving um, caricature style. So I started to do pieces like this. And this is how I started to learn how to do my faces. So just off the one and one, piece of one by one, and that was from his teachings. And I did quite early on in my carving journey, I started to do quite a few of those sort of styles. And I just kept practicing as much as I could to do the faces, to take on anybody's teachings. I also like um, Ryan Olsen as well, which I followed quite a bit. Anything they would say, I would try and practice. Because that's how you learn of the people that are far more advanced than yourself. And that's how I started to progress with my faces. And then added in different things that I liked, different things that I learned off of different people. I took the progression from there. Started to follow people like uh, Richard Holdings from Cartoons Carvings just get different ideas how they do different eyes and that type of thing then i started to progress to doing slightly more details into my faces Got a couple more here doing different eyes so this 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 fella here i started to do for some strange reason i started to do uh upper lid and lower lid of the eyes, which I did for a little while. 
um, and then I started turning that lower one more into into bags. Um, here's a Street Fighter I did. Bags under the eyes. An old fella. Um, one of my more favourites is a cowboy. I don't know how well they come out with the light. One eye shut, one eye open. Ready to draw. And then more recently, started to play with different types of ideas. So this fella was eyelids on the top, no particular eyeball that you can see. Bags underneath. Trying to get depth. This is one of the things I started to learn was to get depth on the nose. That the nose was in the face, not on the face. Something I learned. How, mu how much difference a good mouth would make. So let's grab like, say this guy here. So this is one of my smaller ones. So put a bit of a, bit of a turn on his face gives him so much more character. Angling that mouth. Angling that mouth slightly to give them different looks. Giving them different personalities. Like a hook lip to have a look. And then the different ways I paint. So as you can see on this guy, this guy's really kind of watered down if I can get the angle of the light right. Kind of watered down with wax rubbed in, almost taking the paint off in some places. Almost gives him like an old fashioned look. And then you've got somebody like this fella here, quite heavily painted, with a bit more of a varnishy type look. So just playing around with different styles and learning different ways of doing the face. And then progressing on to doing more details and my faces. So it's great following other carvers, seeing what they do, different ways of doing eyes, and how to incorporate one person's eye technique with another person's uh, nose technique. And that's how I kind of try and go. And even now I'll change around and do different types of techniques. I don't stick with one particular idea. I quite like this fella. One thing I do and have incorporated and do more and more often is just to bring the cheeks in a little bit, which is something I've done on my more recent ones. So I just feel that I can bring his cheeks in. I do that with a gouge if I can. Just gives him a little bit more of a look. I always make sure that nose goes as deep as I as I can get it. And then I like to mix the eyes up a little bit because it makes them look so much different. Now some of these you can carve off a corner. So I just turn this guy upside down. So obviously when you're carving, I've got some of the other ones in the other room. You can carve off the corner and do the noses and the mouth, or you can carve on the round, as they say, or on the flat, and actually shape it. So I'll show you, so I'll grab some of those and I'll show you some of those. So yeah, I would uh, practice off the corner, as you can see on that off the corner there. This was when I started looking at Richard Holding's style of carvings. Different ways of doing the eyes. Trying to make sure that nose was, so this one was a little while ago, so the nose probably for me isn't, isn't deep enough. But I like the expression on the mouth. This was more sort of along the lines of the learnings I got from uh, Dave Stetson, basic type of eyes. And we had a couple of Victorian gentlemen I did at a similar sort of time. Just trying to get different expressions on faces. So I've done lots and lots of faces. I really wanted to get my faces better if I could. This one's another soldier who's seemed to have lost his cigar as I was walking along. What did I do with that? Never mind. I'll have to carve him a new one. Uh, got a sailor. So trying to 
make him longer in the jaws to see what sort of difference that was. Putting like an M style shape for his um, lips and mouth compared to like the, the sort of sneer at one end. I've done on a few. So just trying to try different techniques and those starting to go further back as well. This is a Peaky Blinder, Arthur Shelby. Arthur, so here he is. Give him a sinister look, starting to learn to use uh, the face to give an expression. So how that eye is going up the top, just to make him look a little bit angry. Obviously giving him a black eye does that as well. His little piggy hat on. Did myself a little train driver, trying to make him look a bit dipsy. Again, with the eyes rolling in, the mouth sort of slurred, give him that sort of look. And I love doing these. And this particular one's off the corner. So carve them off the corner and the nose. Being able to get back, I find that's probably slightly easier. But if you're going to do then move on to do like a character, the full shape then becomes a, a little bit more difficult, or I find it a little bit more difficult to do the um, the rest of the body. So it's a bit of a bit of a one or the other. Or you could go, I think all of these ones are off the corner. Yeah, all of those ones are off the corner. Or obviously you can then, like these star ones, go on the flat and shape them in. So we'd shape them in, maybe I'll do another video on that. I think I've touched on it in one of my previous ones. Where we're going, where we're actually pulling the wood into a point to create that nose that we would have naturally off the corner. And practicing and experimenting with different ways of doing things has really paid off for how I want to do a face. So now when I <clears throat> sit down and I've decided I'm going to do a carving, I know I've got this, several different ways of doing different things, whether I go for something along this line, where you can't actually see the eyeball and it's quite subjective, or whether you're going for more of a open type of eye or closed eyes. You've got different options and lots of practice to be able to do them. Here's one where I've got a bit of both. Tiny little guy. Tiny little Viking guy. And then that helps you then be able to age different characters. So this was uh, from a Ryan Olsen. I think it was a Ryan Olsen. I don't know if it was a Zoom class. It wasn't, it wasn't a Zoom class. It was, um, oh, Wood Carving Academy. He did one of these. So those type of eyes just kind of closed over and making it look a bit, bit baggy. <laughs> that was good. That was good fun. So you don't always have to completely carve the eye. You still get relatively good carving. So this was um, my Gordon Brown. I did quite a while ago. Again, there's no real, there's no eyes there. You come out quite well. So I practice lots of different ways of doing eyes and mouths and expressions. I just thought I'd, uh, I just thought I'd share that with you. And what I might do in one of my future ones is do a double carving where we carve one on the round or the flat, and then do one maybe on the corner and see the differences and how we can get them. But anyway. Just thought I'd share with you the different ways of doing faces. We can get into the technicalities of it when we're doing some carvings. But obviously on these on these style ones, this is the type of eye I would use when I'm when I'm whittling. Because I can just do that quite comfortably with a knife. And then on these type of guys, when I'm doing the eyes, I would use a gouge. So I can just gouge the eye back in and then just nip the corners out. Yeah, there's some of my faces, guys. I hope you like them. I enjoy doing them. I'm always whittling away these type of faces in the background. Sometimes it's quite good to get hold of a character like this where this won't take me too long and I can actually work out what sort of style face I might need for, say, a bigger character like, like this one. And also working out the dimensions as well because that's actually a bigger face on that one. 
and I, I, I tend to carve quite small because I'm usually using the one by one wood. Um, but I do go a little bit bigger on some. It's a granny I carved. Again, painted in a totally different way to how I normally do it. But again, I like to experiment. But just showing you how small and you still be able to get the details in. This one was done for, for me by um, Peter Eckback. And look, look, look at that. That's me, by the way. If you haven't seen me, that's me. That's my good lady. He has made me look a little bit tubby, but that's his style. <laughs> you see the size? Look how small that is. Isn't that fantastic? That's not my carving, like I say, that's Peter's. But that is absolutely fantastic, I think. And again, you don't have to go, so I don't know if you, how close I can get that while it still stays in. You know, how, how realistic is that without actually, without actually getting over the top details, which I, I know I do. A little bit, a little bit over the top maybe. Different styles for different things, but yeah, that's incredible. Um, yeah, check him, check him out, Peter Eckback. Excellent. Excellent. Anyway, there you go. So that's a progression of quite a lot of my faces that we've seen there. And I'll continue to do, just keep carving different faces in the background. Um, when I originally started carving, um, which will be now over two years ago, I think I might have my original piece. No, I haven't got my original piece. I say have, there it is. So one of my first ever pieces, oh, if I can grab it, was a farmer. As you can tell by my accent, I live in that neck of the woods. So I'm from the... Somerset in England. So farmers is something I like to like to carve. That was my first ever one. Look at that. Then I progressed on to doing uh, Sharon My Art. If you've not seen um, some of her videos, definitely check that out because I went on to do these little guys. And these are some of my first ever carvings. I had them all dotted all over the place here. Uh, oh, Bart Simpson. So yeah. See the progression from from just a basic. Oh, yeah, he's really flat, isn't he? Really, really flat. To yeah. Anyway, I'm just rambling. I thought it'd be quite interesting to see all the different faces and just see where I've gone with uh, with the carving of the faces and where I will go to next. I'm not sure. Will I get into more and more details, or will we go away from them, and become a little bit more? Subjective, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it's all good. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one.